We're All right. So, oh, sorry. I thought. I thought you said. No, I'll slam my hand. I've been nice. Yeah. Hard. On three. One, two, three. Go. I, I said. I meant on one, two, three. Go. Welcome to Cook Food Good, the show where I teach you how to cook food good and do other things good too. Next week, we're tackling scrimshaw and making your own jorts. <laughs> but today, we're taking on chicken parmesan. It is crispy, it is cheesy, it is delicious. Super simple to make, you don't need any fancy ingredients. And today, I'm teaching my friend Annalise how to make it. Annalise! I'm so happy to be here. How much do you love jorts? My generic jort opinion? Yeah. Really high. Better or worse than chicken parm? My last chicken parm experience was like a soggy chicken parm sandwich from Jersey Mike's. Well, we're not gonna have any soggy chicken parm today and we're not gonna have any frayed jorts. We're gonna get those lines clean. You ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's do it. Annalise, what's the first cardinal sin that people make when they make chicken parmesan? It's not crispy. The chicken too thick. So what we're gonna do, here, hold the meat mallet. Got we're it. I'm just gonna fold this plastic wrap over the chicken. I like to cook with a lot of violent aggression, but I think sometimes, you know, small repeated wax. It's uh, like, you know, a, a death by a thousand cuts. Uh, no. So this is like, <laughs> this is going really well. This is going great. This is normally how this goes. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, I've seen the show. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're a fan? Yeah, I am a fan. Do you want me to like sign something? This is awkward now. Actually, like, but you know how I told you that like, before I started working here, like I had your cookbook. Yes. I like brought it today, low key, because like you should sign it. <laughs> yeah, give me Venmo me 10 bucks and I'll sign. I'm running a freaking <laughs> business here, Annalise. Like charity. This looks really freaking good. This yeah. is exactly what you want, actually. It's not like quite paper thin. You still have oh, a yeah. fair amount of nice whole muscle to it. A lot of times in the past, I've told people to dry brine their chicken, which means you're gonna let salt sit on it for an extended period of time to get a reverse osmotic relationship and get that salt actually permeating. Oh, you're surprised that I know science words. I got a D minus yeah. in AP Chem senior year. <laughs> Shout out to Mrs. Gaines. This guy. I'm just gonna salt it right now and then we are going to get it dredged and then we're gonna pan fry this. Nice. Oh, I was explaining something earlier. About the osmosis. Yeah, he was a uh, white blood cell. And I think maybe Patrick Warburton was like a pill. What movie is that? Top Gun. <laughs> Hey, Annalise, we got our chicken pounded out. So now we have to dredge it. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go a typical flour, wet breadcrumb, but we're gonna do a couple different steps. So first off, you're gonna take these eggs and you're gonna separate them. But Is this need... a funny joke? What? Okay, what's next? <laughs> get it, because I separated the eggs. <laughs> what's funny is I had no idea. I, I, I did not get the joke until you said it. <laughs> really? No, it was That's like so funny. It was like, I haven't seen my grandma in six months because of the pandemic. Oh, and like, yeah. that is the type of joke. Don't get sad. I'm so it's fine. She's fine. She's in a home. Uh, <laughs> That was such like a grandma joke, you know? I know. He's got any Werther's caramels from 1984. Check my pouch. <laughs> this is your grandma purse, just pouch. What are I have a little knife Ooh. in my pouch. You want to try some Ooh. cheese? Oh, yeah. All right, great. Try this cheese. So this is actually not Parmesan. The funniest thing about this chicken Parmesan is there is no Parmesan going into it at all. This is so good. Yeah, this is Pecorino Romano, and I prefer Pecorino. It it's, tastes like Parmesan. It Right, but it's a little bit sharper. So I'm going to be grating this into our breadcrumbs, and I'm going to do a lot of it. I want almost like... A one to two, uh oh, I'm gonna talk math. One to two ratio of cheese to breadcrumb. Oh, shoot, you did it. Yeah. Nice, that math. sounds great. So you're gonna be separating the whites from the yolks and we only want the whites. A lot of people will use whole eggs or eggs and milk, a combination of, but when you just use the egg whites, the protein will actually help it crisp up. And especially when you're doing a dish that is chicken, like covered in a wet sauce with things blanketed on top of it, mm -hmm. then you're actually going to kind of insulate it and give you a better chance of it being crispy. This is a lot of grating. It's like, this is reminds me, it reminds me of scrimshaw. For some reason, when we learned about like explorers in elementary school, we learned about scrimshaw. We had like a three day lesson on scrimshaw and we scrimshawed our own bones. And that was like, that is the most useless thing I learned in elementary school. Till I realized that we learned how to escape from quicksand and quicksand does not exist. Oh my gosh, I did too. Quicksand, how, how would you escape from quicksand? I like can picture the visual of someone just like in quicksand, but like the tip to just like start leaning back yeah. because that helps your heels Well, no, that was step, up. that was step two. What was step, step one? Step one was see if anyone near you has a rope. <laughs> that was a dead, that was a serious thing they said. <laughs> they were like, if you can just wait there for someone with a rope. And I was like, well, I wouldn't be stuck if there was a person with a rope. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse my fingers off. Anyways, so we've done, we've added a little bit of dried parsley along with our breadcrumb and cheese mixture, and then we're gonna add salt. You always wanna season every part of the process. We're just gonna lightly salt the flour. We're gonna lightly salt those egg whites. 
So Annalise, whisk that up because you want to break up the protein so there's not any clumps. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna whisk our cheese and parsley mixture. So I like to keep it pretty clean on this. So there's gonna be a lot of fresh garlic on the sauce that we're gonna make. Mm. And so I like to just focus on the cheese and the parsley and this. One more step. So if you see the surface of the chicken right now, it's a little sweaty. Oh shoot, it is. Yeah, so you that's, can the, see the, that's the osmosis. That's osmosis oh Jones. That's Chris Stop Rock it! and Patrick Warburton and uh, that other guy. They're all going around there and it's all buddy cop and then Riggs and Murtaugh are there. And, uh, Eddie, Eddie, what I'm saying is you gotta dry, you gotta wipe the sweat down off the chicken. Sure, for sure. So Would you like me to do that? lift that chicken. Oh, I'll lift the chicken. Ooh, that sounds. Yeah. Normally you put it so you like fold it in half, but <laughs> no, now no. we got a crunch wrap style. <laughs> <laughs> and we sear it on this. Side. Yes. And. That's a TikTok waiting to happen. Great. So now we got this chicken, and we're just gonna get it into the flour. And you want to kind of like pat your fingers around it just to make sure the flour is getting into all those little nooks and crannies. Pro tip. Pro tip. Another pro tip on scrimshaw, it's really short, clean strokes. I think I missed scrimshaw. the memo on what that is, but I don't want to, another Yeah, you make pictures into whale bones. You make pictures of, of like uh, sailor life into whale bones. Most into of sailor life bones? was uh, making love to manatees. That's the thing, Google, I've talked about it before on the show because it's important to me, but the original mermaid myth, they think it was just like scurvy manatees. ridden sailors having no sex with manatees because they were lonely. Sorry, gosh. making love with manatees. Oh gosh. I one time had a sleepover with manatees, but not well, in I'm that sorry? way. <laughs> no, no, we're here, we're, we're here, we're talking about it. But in the way that my Girl Scout troop got to spend the night at SeaWorld, and so we were in the manatee exhibit. Yeah, room. whatever you do, dude, it's your <laughs> life out of work, you know? Like, we're not gonna judge for... So the reason we're, what? <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do, much like sailors would bury their scrimshaw on deserted islands for future generations to tell their stories, I'm going to leave this chicken buried in the breadcrumbs because any moisture that's gonna release from it is just gonna get trapped by the massive amount of breadcrumbs. It's literally like soaking your wet iPhone that you dropped in, in the rice. toilet in rice. Wow. Yeah. You ever drop your iPhone in the toilet? Mm, uh-uh. Four times. Four times? Dead serious, four times. Did the rice save each time? No. Oh, it's zero out of four. <laughs> The sauce that we're making, I like to go very simple, like, uh, again, against all the things I've done in the past. I want my sauce to taste like butter and olive oil, Ooh. both good things. And then while that's melting, we are going to get some garlic kind of sweating in it. Have you ever done the ring the bell method is what they call it? Yeah, I've just done the like chop both sides, mash it with a knife. Typically I'll do the palm heel strike method where I've you take you it, it and you go, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then the problem is you lose most of the garlic to the floor. <laughs> okay. So the ring the bell method is great because it keeps it isolated into two bowls. <laughs> There it, is. there it is. I like to go uh, Tom Cruise and cocktail, a movie I've never seen. There it is. Sorry, let's check on that garlic. Oh, it didn't work. Nah, no, you got you almost worried. Look at that, look at that pot for a sec. Oh, shoot, now it worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my titty started cramping up when I did that. So <laughs> roll me out. This is a normal, a normal thing that we do in the kitchen. Garlic's really tricky because it's so it's small. small. Yeah, anytime you're using an onion, you can kind of clamp it. But garlic, I just get my fingers really close together and just make sure the knife is being guided along one knuckle. And then just use the pressure to push back. Okay, I would like to try. Here we go. You'll get the feel of it eventually. Oh, I got one good slice in there. There it is! You're doing it! We successfully ah! taught somebody something useful! <laughs> Let's toss it in. Okay, great. And so now we're gonna get this garlic Sweating in the oil, that is gonna kind of infuse the garlic flavor, and then we're just gonna add the tiniest pinch of chili flake, and that garlic is gonna sweat. Cause we're sweating it, not frying it. Yeah, we're sweating it, like we're sweating it, but we're not sweating it. But we're not sweating it? Your humor's rubbed off on me. I just, <laughs> I don't like it. So we see the butter starting to foam a little bit. You hear a little bit of that sizzle. Garlic's infused, but it's not browned. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in a can of crushed tomatoes. One of the problems with crushed tomatoes is it is a little bit watery. And so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna cook this for just about 15, 20 minutes until we get a lot of that moisture out of there. To that, we are just going to add salt because they typically come unsalted. And then a tiny pinch of sugar. They say if you add the tiniest pinch of sugar, it neutralizes the acidity in the tomatoes. Now we are going to take a sprig of basil. I don't like to put a bunch of chopped basil in there because it's just gonna kind of cook and get wilted. Yeah. What I do like to do is I find my stemmiest piece and I take a single basil stem and I go, no way! All right, so we got our sauce in there and we just need to bring this up to a simmer and then we're gonna let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes cool. and then all that moisture is gonna release from it. But right now the seasoning on it is great. You see a little bit of moisture left. We want that out of there! No mold behind the bar! Do you want to start this time? No, I think you should start this time. I liked when you started last time. <laughs> I don't think I... You yeah, slam your hand on the grate though. Right. Huh. But it doesn't like shock you the same way. Just slam your hand on the grate. Where all right, so, Oh, sorry, I thought... I thought you said... No, I'll slam my hand. And then I start? Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna go, oh God, I thought, wait. 
How about well, both slammer hands. Both slammer hands. But on you three. only start. On three. One, two, three, go. I meant on one, two, three, go. One, two, three. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fry up this chicken. We've had it buried in our breadcrumb mixture. We got the oil at 330 degrees. A lot of people say 350. 350 for me, it's too high. Too high, okay. The oil temp's too damn high. Yeah, yeah, 330, 330. Yeah, so 330. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna take this. You don't need to deep fry your chicken. It's fine if you get some of that pan oh, contact. Shoot. Yeah, that's oh the exciting part. Oh and then quick, and least, while that's frying, I need you to grate mozzarella. Switch. <laughs> so we have a brick of mozzarella here. The key is to use the cheap stuff. You don't want to use the like high moisture mozzarella balls that are packed in water because there's gonna be too much moisture on there. But you don't want to buy the pre bag shredded stuff. You can totally use it, but it's covered in anti-coagulating agents. So that's why we're shredding it. Yes. Get shredded, am I right? Yes. You are right, Annalise. Get shredded. <laughs> You see, it's a double entendre. In French, that means double meaning. I, I, see, I understand your humor. We're gelling. We're vibing. We're vibing. So chicken's been frying for about three minutes. On one side, we're just gonna give it a oh, flip and so look at pretty. that. This is actually one of the reasons I prefer pan frying over deep frying is you're getting those little brown crystal yes. flavor nuggets. And you're not gonna get that with a fryer because there's no direct pan surface contact. Mm -hmm. Also, chicken parm is one of those things where I like it when it's a little bit inconsistent. To me, it's like beautifully symphonic and I don't like serving it on sketty because oh, I don't want any distractions in least. Really? Distraction-free cooking is what Mythical Kitchen does. We're all about hardcore, focused education when it comes to food and nothing else. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this chicken in the oven. I'm just gonna fly in a little mini sheet pan. I don't wanna bake it on the rack. And then you're just gonna take the burning hot chicken with your hands. Makes it feel alive. I'm gonna put that right there. Look how much that sauce thickened. Nice it's and chunky. Beautiful. I like to leave Shoot. some of the chicken a little bit exposed. Now we're gonna take some of this mozzarella chicken. No, audible. Audible, call it audible, uh, Omaha. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grate some Parmesan on the sauce because I want the broiler to touch the mozzarella oh, last. Oh, brown it. To brown it. I but love when that. you brown Pecorino, it has such a high salt content that it doesn't actually melt. So I wanna get this kind of like sweating on top of the sauce. Nice. And then we're gonna add the mozzarella on top of that and it's gonna insulate. So you're gonna get all the flavor from that Pecorino, but you're not gonna kind of get those like unsavory kind of, you know, burnt Parmesan bits. So now we're gonna add hefty blanket of cheese. Wow. I like to do this because then you That's get to snack on it. That's what I was going to say. I was yeah. like, can you make crispy cheese? Yeah, you know, I just oh like to gosh, yes. give it a little uh, burial shroud. Why do you have to make crispy cheese like a sad thing? It's not sad. Death's just another part of life. Okay. Because, you know, if you think about before you were born. Let's <laughs> keep going. We're going to take this chicken and we're going to fly it in the oven, uh, broil it for about five minutes, but every broiler is different, so just keep an eye on it. Let me get the door for you. Thank you. Was that a joke or is that, I couldn't tell if this was I just laugh. wanted to be helpful. Okay, you're helpful. <laughs> That looks gorgeous. Oh, shoot. Look at that. It's, That's fantastic. It's beautiful. Beautiful, nicely browned. We didn't get too much caramelization on the cheese, just a little bit. It's not leathery yet. It's nice and supple. I'm just gonna put a dollop of sauce on the plate. Now we're just gonna take the chicken. Wow. Nice little string of mozz. Get oh. it onto the sauce. My gosh. Press it down a little bit so the sauce slightly peeks through. And then we're simply going to take a little bit of this pecorino cheese. Just gonna grate some of that on top. And then pick the prettiest sprig of basil. I just wanna yeah. put a whole sprig of basil on there. Okay. That's lovely. Crown it with a little sprig of basil. Annalise, we have made the chicken parm. This is my absolutely perfect chicken parm of my dreams. I hope it is the chicken parm of your dreams. Annalise, you ready to dig in? You ready to eat this? I can't wait. Let's eat it. Annalise, you ready to eat this? I'm ready to eat this. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. We gotta split the basil. Now I'm gonna cut it in half, because here at the Olive Garden, when you're here in Italy, we do everything family style. The cheese is just like, look at that. that stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. And like, the spotted like brown cheese, and we got yeah, that, that sauce. Yeah, that leopard spotted crust is Ooh. absolutely my favorite. Leopard spotted cheese crust. This is exciting, let's um, dig in. Can I? Oh, please. I'll tell you when. It puts the cheese on the chicken. I did, I'm not even kidding. I said I will tell you when. <laughs> Thank you, that's good. Now, normally I might put ranch dressing on it, but since we're at a nice family establishment, I won't do it. Okay, You're thank welcome. you, Josh. That is a real thing. Wow. When I would go to Little Tony's in North Hollywood, I would put ranch on my chicken palm. Really? I mean, <laughs> I bet it would taste good. Oh my God. Come on. It's still crispy like you said. And then you can get the crispy layers on the outside if you really want to crunch. Yeah. The sauce is so like sweet, but still tomato-y. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we the didn't do too much really to it. the chicken's really tender. Mm -hmm. To me, this is almost a perfect plate of food. But this isn't about me, Annalise. Today, this is about you. Thank you. Do you feel that you are equipped to cook chicken parm good after this? And honestly, do you see yourself making this at home? No, I, I think I do. And honestly, I would venture to try this because it tastes so good and it's not like a soggy piece of chicken. Right? It tastes delicious and flavorful. And I have a basil plant. I would, I would do it. Um, 
While I still have you? Yeah. Oh no, Annalise. You got, I'm gonna get sauce on the cookbook too. That would be perfect. This is actually such a good cookbook. I know, I don't know if we're doing like cookbook plugs on this show, but like Josh's like personality shines through and the pictures are so good and the stories are fun and the recipes are like inventive and cool. So it says to my friend with a rope, <laughs> but then you signed my name. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I sign my signature, I actually sign it in the other person's name. Why? It's to you. Why would I sign my name on your book? That's stupid. I thought you said you've done this before. Yeah, I have. I've signed thousands of people's names. I've signed them on checks. I've signed them on other things. It's it's totally fine. Annalise, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. This no, was a I had so much fun. Thank you. I had more fun than you. And thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new recipes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich Out, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast hit us up on instagram at mythical kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food see y'all next time make your kitchen more mythical with these stickers and magnets now available at mythical.com